Hey guys, Dennis Letter Magic here, and we already have an announcement, actually as of, uh, I think, a day and a half ago, from the uh, Commander Rules Committee. So Sheldon Menery posted this. It says, uh, RC statement on uh, Secret Lair of the Walking Dead. And it starts with, we're not going to bury the lead here. And he spelled the word lead drastically wrong, like so wrong, that I wonder if it's some kind of joke I'm not getting. Who cares? Uh, we're not banning the cards from Secret Lair of the Walking Dead. There you go. Second sentence. We understand that this won't sit well with some folks. Third sentence. Then an in, in improper use of a semicolon. So somebody tried to use it, but this isn't how you do it because the, the next phrase is an unrelated full sentence. So, you know, B plus for effort. But uh, he goes on to say after a semicolon, we have spent a lot of of the last few days listening to a wide variety of opinions and we want to thank everyone for taking the time to share their thoughts. It was at times quite overwhelming. Uh, it's clear that this is an issue that many people are passionate about. Uh, more like everybody's already pissed at wizards for everything they've done in the last like two years. And this is just one more thing. So, oh no, everybody's mad at us. What, what can we do? Well, sit on the fence so hard that you risk breaking the damn fence. Are you ready for the most middle-of-the-road politician bullshit you've ever heard? Okay, here we go. Our decision doesn't reflect an endorsement of these cards, but what we believe is best for Commander in the long run. Uh, if you'd like to understand how we arrived at this decision, we encourage you to read on. Do tell. I do want to understand that. So uh, we identified three major concerns during the course of the discussion, and we'll address... Uh, each and how they relate to Commander below. They are, one, the availability of these cards is problematic. Yeah. Number two, the existence of non-magic IPs on cards should be discouraged. Uh, that's not true. Put them in silver border. Literally everybody said that when Mark asked them. Uh, then number three, Negan is a dubious character. Ha ha, so funny. So funny. Put in a joke. Ha ha. Diffuse and distract with humor. It's almost like uh, some kind of PR person wrote this. There's no support in the Commander Philosophy document for banning these cards. Well, there's support in the community, so kiss my ass. Uh, they certainly present no mechanical difficulties, and uh, taken simply as cards, don't come close to fitting any criteria we have for banning. Uh, however, as we are always seeking to improve the document, we discussed whether banning these cards would fit under new philosophical criteria, and whether using the ban list in this way was appropriate. Let me just translate that. We didn't have a way to insider or trade these, so we're not banning it. That's my take on it. So anyway, it goes on to say card availability. Concern of many players is that these cards would not be widely available, and for some countries, only available through third-party sellers. That's true, they do not ship everywhere. Uh, they worry that this model would be repeated in the future. You're damn right they would if it made money. Uh, we've heard you loud and clear on this issue, uh, because the cards are mechanically unique. This is a major problem, uh, most folks have. We wish that all our friends around the globe could have access to these cards. So uh, you think more people should be able to buy their stupid dangling something you need in front of their face bullshit. I personally don't think that's the solution. I think they shouldn't sell them in the first place. So I, I do have to dispute their conclusion on that one. However, the Rules Committee, of its own accord, can't solve that problem. Uh, what we can do is miss the second comma in that last sentence. Anyway, what we can do, what we already have done, is add our voice to yours. So we're going to call it out and be on your side, but also do nothing about it. That is middle-of-the-road fence-sitting as hard as you can get. That's pl called playing both sides. They don't want to piss off wizards, or they'll take action against their website, their group, they'll take their power away, and they'll have nothing. But they don't want to piss off the community because having the community pissed at you is not good. And they're already in hot water for the accusations, very accurately in my opinion, of uh, insider trading. So they say, uh, since the issue broke, we've been in contact with well-placed people at Wizards of the Coast uh, to make sure that they understand your displeasure. I'm sure they've heard it at this point, but then again, they live in a bubble, so who knows. And where it comes from, as well as urging that they work towards a solution. Yeah, except their solution was you need to ship it to more places. In other words, like, do this, but do it bigger and, and wider. No? Oh, this is just terrible. So uh, while we understand why people are concerned about such limited availability, you know it's print to demand, right? We don't believe that this problem uh, applies to Commander in the same way it does to tournament formats. 
Uh, occasionally, there are commander tournaments, by the way. Successful tournament formats require uh, generally equal and complete access to cards. But one of the themes that we've reiterated in the last or in the earliest days of the format is that you don't need access to every card in order to have fun playing commander. That is very much in the spirit of commander. He hit the nail on the head there. And plus, I mean, who has like 10 grand to drop on some power nine crap for your uh, commander deck? Almost anybody's deck would be improved by it, but almost nobody has the budget for it. Nor should you be playing with a card that expensive. You shouldn't even be transporting an object that expensive without, like, body armor and a weapon. So, let me just throw it out there. Availability of cards is a little bit of a problem in Commander from the get-go, but him calling it a not-tournament format, I mean... It depends how you look at it. Some official sanctioned WPN events, aka FNM, the format is Commander. Some GPs in the past would have side events for big prizes, and the format was Commander, but I, I think, in my opinion, there's two Commanders, and, and honestly, people have named them, so yeah, there pretty much are. It's just there's no distinction between them, uh, except for, what's that other one, Canadian Highlander, I think, where they put, like, a point limit on, on broken, degenerate, expensive cards. I never hype it up or mention it, because it doesn't really solve the problem, but it's a step in the right direction. Ban all tutor effects by rule, and ban all the power nine. Done. Commander's fixed. The end. But of course, they don't feel like doing that. But uh, yeah, if you're playing for like, you know, $500 in prizes, thousand bucks in prizes at a side event, you're going to bring your turn two combo deck. Okay. That's a different commander than what 99% of people play. So if you can't get it, can't afford it or whatever, everybody's sold out, whatever, just play a different deck. Like people play commander to have fun. People do not currently play standard to have fun. I, I think we can agree on that. There is no fun to be had in standard right now. And draft is kind of shit too for the new set. So anyway, the focus of Commander being a non-tournament play, he says, plus the enormous card pool available where almost anything goes, means that unique cards floating around doesn't present the same kind of problem. The stakes in a Commander game is the fun of the participants, and that doesn't require all the cards. Preach it. So a problem we see with adopting a band philosophy based on card availability is explaining it down the road. And that's the thing, these cards aren't broken or overpowered. Which is usually why they ban stuff. So just just card availability, that's what they're focusing on. How about, like, on principle, wizards shouldn't have done this. This is bad. So we're going to make a statement by banning it. Where is that? Where, where do you reference any of that? He had, like, one sentence where he's like, well, our rules don't allow for that, and we might rewrite them, but then we didn't. So then this whole article is, oh, availability, availability. What about people playing Commander in Azerbaijan? Nobody cares. Also, believe it or not, I'm pretty sure they ship Secret Lair there. I think I remember seeing that on the list. So, I mean, the next part is just doubling down on this crap. So, uh, a problem we see with adopting a, a ban philosophy based on card availability is explaining it down the road. If, a year from now, someone stumbles across a copy of one of these cards, tries to use it, and discovers that it is banned in Commander, they will ask why. And the explanation is unsatisfactory. People didn't like how they were allocated. This does not make a lot of sense to the person who's holding the card, and who doesn't own many other cards that may be out of reach for them. We want people to be able to play the cards they own and only resort to bans when it's problematic for the health of the format, not the wider ecosystem. If that's your stance, but once again, you're completely deflecting. Nobody gives a crap about availability. Wizards printing eternal legal stuff in, in a non-randomized booster, in a non-randomized set. This is not Commander Legends. This is not Modern Horizons. It's just another thing that is supposed to be an overpriced premium collectible. And now if you want it, oh, now you got to buy it. And then the characters aren't even in the magic universe. It just, it, it makes no sense as a product. Everybody in the community is on the same page that it shouldn't exist. So we wanted you to ban it because it shouldn't exist. Not because of availability or price or a limited run or no promise of a reprint or, you know, global distribution patterns being different. Almost nobody cares about that. All we care about is in principle, they shouldn't have done this. We need to send them a message, ban it. That was it. So they do say health of the format, not the wider ecosystem. So, you know, wizard's decisions. They did throw wizards under the bus a little bit. They said, oh, it's a wizard's decision and we think they shouldn't have made it or whatever. So they're kind of hinting at what's real here, but then they're just going availability, availability, availability. What a crooked and misleading article. So he goes on to say these cards are in no way a threat to the health of commander. Wrong. I mean, the concept of them existing and wizards making them. So I guess the cards... No, but the cards existing, yes. So, I mean, that's a partially untrue statement. But, uh, in fact, uh, we see it just the opposite. We're the only format that could bear the weight of this kind of experimentation. 
It's almost like you're encouraging them now. You flipped on that. No, we. this is a bad experiment. This is a format in which crab tribal is just as valid as blood pod. You know, I don't think that's true. Adding a few quirky cards that aren't ubiquitously available doesn't threaten that. Once again, not the point, not anybody's complaint. Uh, one of the calls from the community was that we should ban these cards, quote, to send a signal to Wizards of the Coast. There we go. They're finally addressing it. I didn't read this ahead of time. For a, quote, blatantly commercial act. <laughs> First of all, we don't think it's appropriate to tell them how to run their business. We're the customers. It is literally appropriate. That's that's how a free market works, okay? It is as appropriate as anything could be in reality on this planet for a customer to tell the business that they don't like something they're doing with the product they're trying to sell to them that they don't need. So I don't care that you don't think it's appropriate. It is appropriate. Anyway, that's way outside the scope of our charter. I mean, I guess if he means the, like them themselves, but they're also customers and they represent a group of players which are the customers. So like, I, I think you could translate to that, you know, just being, we're scared of them. So second, the banning, uh, the ban list isn't the appropriate vehicle to voice our displeasure over something, nor, uh, using it as punishment. Yes, it is. That It's literally the solution. Nobody would buy these and wizards would have to backtrack and not ever do this again. If you made them worthless and unplayable in the format that anybody would buy them for. So the ban list is an abstract concept to, uh, corporate decision makers uh, no, the corporate decision makers manage the ban list for every other format. So that once again, that's not true. Uh, the right path to walk is the one we've gone down. Real change happens from having real conversations with real people, uh, which we've been doing since the news broke. You guys made this decision in one day. This was posted October 2nd and wasn't it announced on October 1st? I could be wrong. Maybe it was two days. I think they just sent an email to Wizards. It's like, can you not? And also we're not banning it. Please don't do anything bad to us. And then they publish this garbage, so uh, whatever. They also say, uh, sending such a signal would be doomed to failure. Uh, it will not have the effect that people hope. Want to bet? Uh, the primary goal of these cards is almost certainly new player acquisition. Really? Somebody who's never played Commander before is going to rush out and get one of these and make it their Commander just because. I, I don't know about that. Uh, I think this is longtime collector rich whale products. And then the legality and commander is just some weird thing they shouldn't have done. So Wizards hopes to lure some Walking Dead fans into magic. Oh, that's what they're saying. Uh, that's uh, that's still pretty narrow. I don't know about that. Uh, and any interest from commander players is just a small bonus. No, that no, it's like 95% interest from commander players and 5% Walking Dead people who have never heard of magic. There's no way it's even near 50-50. That is such a ridiculous statement to make and he knows it. So, uh, banning the cards until functional reprints are available doesn't do much either. Um, it encourages them to make the functional reprints really quick. All they had to do was say it's in that next Norwegian set, the Viking one, or it's, um, in, uh, Commander Legends. Or Modern Horizons 2. So it's like, buy them now if you want them early and you want the fancy versions, otherwise just wait a couple months, they're coming. That's all Wizards had to do. Whether it was true or not, whether they had to revise the print thing and add them or not, that would have been nice. And I, I actually suspect they are in Commander Legends, but it's like, doesn't that come out like really shortly, like in like a month or something? I think it's like in November sometime. I, I know it got delayed. Yeah, I think it's like 45 days from now-ish. So it's probably not true that it's in there. That's where I would have stuck it if I were them and just had like a little early pre-release thing where you can get your deck built and have the fancy, fancy Commander version of the Commander cards. Okay. I don't think anybody would really give a crap if they would have accompanied the announcement with, don't worry, the real versions are coming. If you don't want a gigantic lore break in charge of your commander deck. I mean, if somebody's like, yeah, my deck is primarily uh, based on on one of the uh, Tarkir, I was going to say guilds, what the hell is it, a, a clan? And they're like, oh, who, who's, who's the leader of the deck? Negan. Like, Negan from Walking Dead is now one of the cons of Tarkir. I don't think he matches colors with them, but whatever. Just pretend that was true. Like, it's like, I went with rogues and it's partially like Kamigawa and partially um, uh, from the new set. And who, who's leading them? Oh, the famous rogue Negan. Negan from a show, a television show in real life. What? Like, I could see people being like, what even is this? But if Wizards would have told people, like, don't worry, a reprint is coming sometime within the next year. So if you're getting them now, you're getting them early. And it's because you don't care about a gigantic, like, insulting level of lore break. Some people don't care. They'll put together two things that weren't anywhere within a thousand years of each other in the lore and not give a crap, um, but some people do care. So just throwing that out there, that's a thing. 
Speaking of Negan, now see, this is one thing I was going to point out, and I'm glad they did. There, there's a lot of truth in this article, and there's a lot of deflection nonsense and just stop blaming us language that they hope will believe. But uh, they have a whole section just titled Negan. We've also heard some displeasure over the Negan character being on a card. Yeah, I've heard some displeasure from myself of Negan not dying in the series. Spoiler alert. If there's one human being on, on the fictional world in that, in that show that deserves to be killed for being such a miserable awful blight on humanity it is him and they're all like oh peace and everyone get along and let's all hug trees and sing songs screw that negan should have been dead at the end of whatever the hell season that was that that's bullshit that he wasn't so anyway yeah they say negan uh being a character on a card given his fictional history of terrible actions is is quite bad uh we are sympathetic to this and did give some consideration to banning just that card i mean yeah it's right up there with putting like I don't know, Hitler on a card, maybe? I think Hitler killed a couple more people. I was going to say, like, Attila the Hun, Genghis Khan, but nobody gives a shit about them. They're basically a meme at this point. So is Hitler to an extent. But, I don't know, you could compare Negan to, like, some high-level person in Al-Qaeda, maybe? Like, just based on their actions, how they operate, what they do, and how many people they killed? So there is a big, 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 big difference between real life and television, but it's like the character that he represents. Why the hell would anybody want to support that, even if it's fictional? Like, yeah, the whole game's fictional. Who gives a shit? So yeah, people are like, I hate him. I hate him with a passion, and I, I like I might even want the other cards, but I don't want him. I don't want to see him on a card. I hate looking at his stupid face, and I don't agree with what the writers did with him in the show in any way, shape, or form from start to finish. Yeah. That's me. I agree with that. So the fact that it, it got so bad and they had so much backlash over Negan being such an asshole and how terribly he was handled in the show that people thought he should be banned and they actually considered about banning just him. Probably as some middle ground compromise and not for the reasons they actually stated, but they say we're sympathetic to this and did give some consideration to just banning that card, but we chose not to because Negan is a villain, plain and simple. There's no implied endorsement. Oh, they put him on a card. That's an endorsement. Uh, sanitation or Huh? or glorification of his actions. I think they mean sanitization, uh, which is like the whole next season, FYI, spoiler alert, uh, in that he's no different than other villains already in the magic universe. Ah, he's worse than anyone I know of. Uh, even though, as portrayed by an actor, it seemed closer to real-world discomfort. I mean, yeah, like dramas, you're supposed to get into them and like, you know, whatever. Uh, no one is uh, suggesting that by putting him on a card, he should be idealized. Ah, uh, nobody's suggesting that that's not what they just did. A card is practically a monument to the person on it, just saying. Uh, any more than Nicol Bolas or Yagmoth. Yeah, well, look what happened to them in the story. Something proper. Uh, so we will use this as an opportunity to remind each other to respect the uh, other players' boundaries. Oh, are, are they going to put? Are they going to require a trigger warning if we're if you're playing them as your commander, you have to warn your opponent, and if they're going to get triggered, you have to switch decks? Because I feel like that's where we're going with this, and that sounds like what some members of the Magic community would do. Oh my gosh! So being empathetic and accommodating is vital for a healthy gaming community. Being considerate of other players makes us all better. Okay, so if somebody's running Negan as their commander player and i sit down to play a game and they pull that out i'm gonna be like really but if they pull out a mill deck i am going to throw furniture i'm gonna get violent so there are some things i care about more in the game than negan but they still shouldn't have put him on a card so finally they post in conclusion the community outcry over these cards did not go unheard <laughs> but we're not doing anything about it we're fence riding and we're deflecting and saying it's an availability problem and then assuring you that we almost banned one of the cards but th at the end of the day we did nothing and we're trying to convince you to soften the blow with what we're saying here that's if you read between the lines so we used our relationship with people inside wizards of the coast for like one day to have an honest conversation about how and why so many people felt betrayed by this process yeah it's more anti-consumer format ruining bullshit that they shouldn't have done it's just another cash grab but even more aggressive and even more egregious and greedy this time and you're unwilling to send them a message because it wouldn't do anything yes it would it would do something you're wrong so i don't agree with this but like if i was on the committee would i be like hey should we rock the boat and piss them off and, and cost wizards thousands of dollars and just hope nothing bad happens to us and we don't all basically lose our positions no no let's not do that but i would have in the harshest possible terms and words in the statement, just 
thrown wizards under the bus and just be like, we're not taking action, but we almost did. This is terrible and they better not do it again. Look at the community backlash. This is bad. Wizards get a clue. Like this wouldn't have been like apologetic, deflective and manipulative, which is how I would describe this entire announcement. Now here's the biggest sack of horseshit in this entire announcement. Are you ready for this? One of the outcomes of that conversation, so with Wizards of the Coast, is that they were supportive of whatever decision we made. Bullshit! I bet they outright threatened you to your face. You guys do whatever you feel you need to do. We don't need to make money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that sounds like something a Wizards high-level manager would say. I mean... The most polite way I can say this is I don't know the uh, gender identity, orientation, and skin color of the person who wrote this. And, you know, how wizards would handle it differently accordingly because they're a bunch of racist idiots. <laughs> but sparing that as a possibility, I still call bullshit on the whole. They were supportive of whatever decision we made. No, they weren't. You're either assuming that you're just lying about it or... Well, you're just lying about it. That's so likely to be what happened. I made it two of the answers. So thank you to everyone who has weighed in with their thoughts. We tried very hard to keep up with all of them, even as the Discord server became overwhelming. Oh, God. That's what I got to drop in on and just meme dump at some point. That would be epic. We should live stream rate it. I think that's technically still allowed on uh, this platform. I think Twitch frowns on it. And it wouldn't even be like, all caps, screw you, copy pasta. No, it'd be like, everybody go post bread. Like, go post a picture of bread. That, that's a common raid meme. Mods are asleep post bread. You ever heard of that one? I mean, come on. In fact, you know what? For like the next 48 hours, go to Cinder Shadows Discord and just post pictures of bread. And then just the word bread with no context whatsoever. Link in the description and probably a pinned comment once I remember. Actually, I don't know if I can generate an invite code. Go to his channel and then go click on a Discord thing in his descriptions. So, like, one of the comments on this was just like, yeah, unsurprising and typical. Another one, I am incredibly disappointed with your decision here today. I mean, this person, like, goes off on them, like, politely, but, like, with logic. Uh, you say the ban list is not a place to vent issues or handle non-business concerns. Oh, remember when wizards banned Invoke Prejudice? I guess that is what the ban list is for. It's for bullshit statements that are supposed to do something or mean something. Actually, oh my gosh, he went a different direction with this. I got to read this. This is uh, Trey Parker. Okay, I doubt it, but that's that's his username. <laughs> um, you say the ban list is not a place to vent issues or handle non-business concerns, but Wizards has already set that precedent with the banning of cards that can vote, evoke pre prejudice. I can read. Remember that? It was a distraction to make us forget about Wizards of the Coast racist and sexist actions. He's referring to multiple inappropriate jokes made by their staff members over the last, like, decade and uh, their bullshit hiring practices. He even doubles down, like, what happens to some poor player who just wanted to play Crusade in a stupid Anthem tribal deck? But no, they have to deal with Wizards' political statement or their moral statement or we're going to take a stance against this bullshit ban statement. There's kind of some you're just encouraging them to keep doing this kind of comments. and I mean, some people are kind of like, oh, I understand. Oh, you made a good point, whatever, and kind of, you know, ass kissing and whatever. And then there's Jeremy John, which is also probably not his real name. Uh, that, I mean, the next guy's name is The Real Ninja, spelled wrong every way you can imagine. But yeah, so allegedly Jeremy John posted, Spineless Bastards! RC ain't nothing but wizard's puppets! So there was a, there was some mixed reactions to this. So, I mean, I guess for fairness, I'll read one just by somebody whose username is Charles. Uh, thank you for listening and considering the issues. It would have been very easy to bury your heads in the sand and say it's none of our business and not even communicate with the community about uh, the displeasure to wizards. And then we've got Ted Mosby. Hacks! Hope the insider power you feel is worth it. This guy's username is Disappointed Community. <laughs> <laughs> this is your one chance to take a stance against the direction Wizards of the Coast has taken the game. Now it's obvious that you're condoning it, if not outright supporting the corporate agenda that will in the long run prove destructive for the game. On well, specifically the commander format. Uh, not that it was unexpected, but it is still very, very disappointing. Somebody made the same point I do. They're like, how do you feel when I bust out a moat? Because that's way more expensive than any of these cards ever will be. Not everybody has access to moat. Get over it. Honestly, any card over 100 bucks should be banned in Commander, but, I mean, how would you do that? you have to, like, track the prices and just, yeah. Another person said, if you want to gain better perspective on this, just watch any YouTubers. Then he says Commander's Quarters and Tolarian Community College and many more. Hmm. 
hmm, who could the many more be? But I heard uh, Tolarian kind of went off on him. I didn't see the video yet because I've been working all day in Madison, believe it or not. I actually just got home, which is why this is so late. But, uh, I mean, yeah, he'll call out wizards when they do really bad stuff. And he's gotten kind of temporarily blacklisted and kind of shunned by them for a little bit. And he's too big to ignore. And most of the time he, you know, toes the party line or whatever. But he'll call them out when they do something really bad. And I heard that's what he did. So, you know, good for him, I guess. I'm just confused by this one. I cannot agree with Joshua's statement enough. Bravo. This is written by Sheldon Mennery. Did I miss something here? So there's one last one. I think you guys get this. Unbelievably disappointed. Why does RC even exist if it's just going to kowtow to the very type of corporate greed it has been tasked with protecting the from? That was almost a sentence. Um, I don't remember them ever saying that was their job, but I mean, okay, I get the sentiment. So like, really, I, I pulled some of the funnier, more extreme ones, but a lot of people are like, thanks for your consideration, but you're wrong and here's why. And they're being like really polite because commander people are uh, the greatest the community has to offer. Except for the ones playing Merfolk, Elves, or Mill. You can all go back to hell. And take your garbage deck with you. So anyway, that's uh, wrapping up this drama. I think they made this decision awfully fast for their uh, level of consideration they allegedly gave it. And uh, I, I found most of what they said very misleading. Like I said, very deflective, very PR, very sanitized, very kind of like psychologically manipulative or whatever. So I don't like anything about this. Do I think they should have done it? I mean, maybe as a... A very drastic message to wizards, but they would have gotten in some deep shit. So tactically, no. For their own self-interest, no. But morally, yeah, they should have done it. But if it was me, I probably wouldn't have done it. So anyway, that's what's up. Um, also, there's a big, 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 big flaw with my uh, channel at the moment. And I'm having YouTube take a look at it. So if some, I don't know, weird shit starts happening over the next couple days, no videos get uploaded or whatever. It's not like strikes or copyright or anything. It's... It's more of like a reporting data problem. It's something just odd is going on, and I'm very, very, very concerned about it. So, I don't know. I don't even know what to warn people about. If you see some weird shit, something weird's going on, maybe, like, videos disappearing, reappearing, notifications not going... Like, literally anything could come from this, because it's, it's something's glitched or whatever. So, I'm having them look at it. Hopefully, I'll get a response by, like, Monday or Tuesday. Probably not from my understanding, but... uh. I am deeply concerned about this, and I, I could tell you why, but for legal reasons, I can't. So who knows what the hell's going on, but this this is the last shit I needed this weekend. I'm stressing my ass off over this. I guess I can tell you it involves money. It's not like they accidentally turned monetization off, but the wrong amount of money is being reported. It all of a sudden changed to a different amount, and let's just say it's, oh, a wee bit lower. So yeah, if this is some, oh, no, we changed this, and this is the new rate we're paying you, um, I'll delete my channel. I'll go the fucking work somewhere else if, if they're just going to, like, wipe out over a thousand dollars worth of my money for the last month and just be like this is what we're paying you now so it damn well better be a display glitch so that's probably more than i should have said about it but uh i am stressed the f out because i've got bills and i was counting on them to pay me the amount that they said they're gonna f pay me not oh you know how you've been monitoring you know your income for like the last you know 20 30 days yeah we're just taking it and slashing it more than in half hope you didn't need that money and there's no rhyme or reason and now we're gonna take 85 percent instead of like 60 percent I've never heard of them doing that. There's no reason to do that. My channel is in perfect standing. So like I said, this damn well better be a display glitch because the, the, the dollar amount they're displaying right now in my analytics, that's over a thousand dollars different than it was yesterday. Literally yesterday better not be the amount they're paying me for September. Let's put it that way. So we'll see what the response is to this and how long it takes them to fix it. But like, I need that money to pay my bills in a couple weeks so they better get their shit together and fix this in the meantime feel free to go to teespring.com and buy a shirt because apparently i need the money also patreon link in the description thanks everybody i'll see you guys next video